Hey everybody, it's Lon Seib and we got a really fun photo printer to take a look at today. This is the HP Sprocket Studio Plus. It is very compact as you can see here. It prints out really nice looking 4x6 photos. It is super easy to use and it uses a process called dye sublimation to print out the photos, which is very different than inkjet technology and it's also different than the other HP sprocket printers out there that use something called zinc. So you get very nice quality pictures in a very compact form factor here. And we're going to dive into this printer and what it's all about in just a second. But I do want to let you know in the interest of full disclosure that this came in free of charge from HP. However, they are not sponsoring this video, nor are they reviewing or approving what you're about to see before it was uploaded. So all the opinions you're about to hear are my own. So let's get into it now and see what this printer is all about. Now the price point on this comes in at $149. The consumable cost for the printer is roughly about 44 cents a picture. They sell a package that includes the special paper you need for the printer along with the special ribbons that it uses. Now, as I mentioned, this is a dye sublimation printer. And instead of using ink, it uses a ribbon cartridge here. And you'll see the process of how it prints when we run our test photo off in a minute. And what's nice about this technology is that if you print out a bunch of stuff and then put the printer up on the shelf for a few weeks, when you take it back down again, it's not going to get clogged up. There's no liquid ink that has to go back through a tube and onto the paper. It is uh, strictly using this ribbon, which gets transferred to the paper during the printing process. So in some ways, it kind of resembles a laser printer in that if you're only printing photos occasionally, there's no penalty on the consumable side for letting the printer sit for a while. And that's what I like about this one quite a bit because I'm not always printing photos every single day. Now, the way this works is that you take off the top portion here, which is the paper tray, and then you fold this little portion down here, open the front door, and then stick the uh, cartridge in to get printing and, of course, turn it on. The setup process is pretty easy on this. If you are a computer nerd like I am and you have your Wi-Fi network segmented into the 2.4 gigahertz and the 5 gigahertz, it doesn't connect to 5 gigahertz networks automatically, but most of you watching will have a Wi-Fi setup that will automatically get the printer routed to the right place. So I think it will be relatively easy to get set up for most of you. And there's an app that I'll show you in a minute that it works with. The cartridges go in here on the side and it just kind of snaps into place and it only goes in one way. And once you get everything set up here, you are ready to print. So why don't we boot the app up now and take a look at what the print quality looks like. All right, so here we are inside of the Sprocket app. This runs on iOS and Android. I have it right now pulling photos out of my phone's photo gallery, but you can also grab them from Instagram, Facebook, and Google Photos, and you can set up your account here on the bottom. Now, what I'm gonna do first is just do a basic photo print. So I've got this picture here from my trip to the Space Center for the launch of the Artemis mission a few months back. And what I did here is just selected the photo. I can go in and make some slight adjustments and edits to it. And what we're gonna do though for this one is just print it out just to see what the process is. So I'm gonna go here and hit the print icon and it will then spin things up and send it over to the printer. Now the phone doesn't have to be on top of the printer. I'm just gonna place it here for the time being. And you can see the process here as it prints. Now what you do need to do is keep the app open as the process works its way through here. The prints will take about 90 seconds, and what you'll see it do here is spit the photo out the back and then suck the paper back in. And this is a four-step process. So as you can see here, that ribbon is laying down the yellow portion of the image right now. And what it's going to do next is suck it back in, and then it's going to apply, I believe, the magenta layer next. And it'll go through now uh, three more iterations here as it prints because it's laying these layers down one on top of the other. But what's amazing is just how precise it is to be able to align all these colors in such a way that you get a good photograph out of it when it's done. It almost kind of reminds me of the old Polaroid days where you could see your image kind of appear in front of you <laughs> as the process works out. Now this is a borderless print, but as you'll see in a minute, you do have to tear off some perforation on the end. Now this last layer is the last color it's laying down. So now we're gonna have pretty much the photo output. And then it is gonna suck it back through one more time to put on a bit of a coating to kind of lock the image onto the paper. So why don't we let that finish its thing here and we'll come back when the printing process is completed. 
All right, so the photo has been printed, and one thing I did notice is that it doesn't have as much contrast in this particular photo as it does on the original. You can see we don't have as much detail in the clouds there as we do on the phone version. But a few of the other photos I printed were very, very close to what I saw on the phone. And it's certainly a lot better than what you might get out of a cheap inkjet printer. Some of the inkjet photo printers that run with six inks or more uh, tend to do a little better here, but this is great for, I think, the price point here and for something so compact. Now you'll notice that it's not quite borderless yet, and that's because we do have to tear off the perforation on the two ends here. So I'm gonna do that real quick. It comes off pretty cleanly, but you will have a little bit of a rough edge here on the side when you do pull off the perforation. So I would love for them to figure out a way to maybe have something that doesn't have as rough of a outcome when you're done pulling that off because the top parts are smooth like a traditional photo from the photo lab might be, but again, the sides here feel a little rough. But if you put it in a frame or something or hang it up, you're probably not gonna notice it. Now earlier, I printed out a bunch of other photos to get a feel for the quality level here. So here's a photo I took in portrait mode of my friend's dog, and this is really close to what my phone screen looks like here. Again, the contrast is not as deep as it is on this OLED display on the phone, but it's good, I think, for you know getting some pictures printed out for friends or to hang on the wall or something. One thing you will notice when you look at these prints up close is that the details are a bit softer than what you'd have on screen. The printer is a 300 DPI printer, so there are, of course, professional grade printers that have much higher resolution that would deliver better details when you look up close. But I think for four by six, especially how most people look at four by sixes and display them, it is more than adequate. My, my wife loves to print out pictures on a seasonal basis from all the things the kids have been up to and we hang them up around the house and kind of swap them out. And for that purpose, it's great. And I think the quality here is very close to what you would get with your local photo lab. Uh, here's another picture I took of a very tiny uh, Sega Genesis Christmas ornament. Pretty good detail on here. Again, you'll see some softness if you hold it up really close to your face there, but it looks good and decent contrast here. Uh, here's a photo I printed of a night shot of that Artemis rocket when I was in Florida because I was curious how it would handle something that had a lot of black on the page because there is actually no black portion of the ribbon. It's actually combining all the colors together to get there. And it looks like a nice deep black. There's a little bit of a hue to it, but not noticeable. So it looks really, really good, even with photos that are shot at night. Uh, this is one of my favorites that I outputted from it. This is from our local train ride. They have a Christmas steam train thing that you can go on. And this is just a natural shot out of my, my camera. No uh, adjustments or anything to it. It just looks so cool. Now this photo also demonstrates a few of the nuances of the printer that I wanted to point out. The first is the color temperature of the paper and the printing process. As you can see here, it definitely leans more on the warmer side, which gives you a little bit more saturation and in photos like this, a little less of a black and white kind of look. So as you can see here, the photo on the phone has much more gray in the smoke area here where this one just looks a little bit warmer. And of course the 40 and the light also look a little warmer versus the original photograph here. You'll also notice that the uh, photo is a bit cropped as well. So we don't have all of the detail points here that we have on the original photo, especially this little area of the smokestack. And that is because most of these pictures that you're going to print from your phone are not naturally in a four by six aspect ratio. So to fill up the entire paper here like this, you have to crop and zoom a bit. The app does this automatically. I have not found a way to adjust that crop manually, at least at the time I'm recording this video. Maybe they'll add that as a feature later. So just be aware that some of the things around the edges may get cropped out and your photos will zoom in a little bit to blow them up to the full page. Now they also have a couple of fun features built into the app, one of them being able to create photo collages. So if I tap select up here and select a few photographs, what I can do is build out a collage of photos. So now that I've selected four, I can tap collage and it will give me a four up here where I can print them like this, but I also have a few other layouts that I can do. And then of course I can swap things around here and get everything to where I want it to be and then print it out. Just remember that you can only print four by six on this printer. So you're not gonna have a lot of room for all these pictures. So here's an example of one that I did earlier. And what you will notice here when you make a photo this small is this is where some of the detail issues that I mentioned earlier will become more evident. So you're not gonna see a lot of detail 
on the uh, computer hardware there that I've got on the bottom of the photograph. But still, it's fun to be able to kind of make these little collages. Another thing you can do, let me back out of here for a second, is you can also go in and add some fun labels and things to it. So if you click on the edit button up here and go over to the text area, you can have a few of these pre-built uh, little um, templates that you can drop onto your photo. And I think you can also go in and put some text in on them as well. It's pretty basic, very simple stuff, but I kind of like simplicity in a product like this because for the most part, it prints out four by six photos. And I think most people just want to print the photo and be done with it. And this really gets you there, I think, very, very quickly. Now you can also take pictures inside of the app using your phone's cameras and print them right out. They have a fun photo booth mode here. They also have a mode for taking passport photos and ID photos and that sort of thing. So all in, I think it's a pretty simple product, but has a very nice output to it. So if you're somebody like my wife that prints out these four by six photos and hangs them on the wall or gives them to friends or whatever, you're gonna love this printer or maybe love gifting it to somebody who loves to print out four by six photos. It doesn't do any other sizes, but the output quality is very nice here. This is very close to what you would get sending your phone photos over to a photo lab and you get the results immediately here. What I also like about it is that it's compact, so when you're done with it, you fold it on up here, you put the tray on the top, you close the door, it shuts off, and you can put it up on a shelf for two or three months, and when you pull it back down again, it's gonna start printing immediately because there's no ink in here. It's not gonna get all clogged up and useless after sitting on the shelf for a while, and so the cartridges that you buy will be using all of their consumables on the paper and not being used to clean out nozzles and that sort of thing. So really nice for occasional printers as well. It weighs about two and a half pounds or 1.1 kilograms. Again, very compact here. When you are using it, you wanna make sure that the uh, back here has some room for the photos to pop out, but for storage, it folds up pretty nice here. So that's gonna do it for this look at the HP Sprocket Studio Plus. And until next time, this is Lon Seidman. Thanks for watching. This channel is brought to you by the Lon.TV supporters including Gold Level supporters Brian Parker, Chris Allegretta, Hot Sauce and Video Games, Logic KGR, Tom Albrecht, and Amda Brown. If you want to help the channel, you can by contributing as little as a dollar a month. Head over to lon.tv slash support to learn more. And don't forget to subscribe. Visit lon.tv slash s.